If you've been struggling with bloating and burping and constipation, uh, acid reflux, or perhaps you've recently been diagnosed with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you've probably heard of something called hypochlorhydria. Hypochlorhydria is a deficiency of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. And hydrochloric acid is an important gastric uh, secretion that enables us and enables our bodies really to break down proteins. Um, it activates uh, a variety of different uh, important enzymes in our body. It activates hormones. It protects us against bacterial and fungal overgrowths in our gut. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I'm the clinic director here at drhagmeyer.com, where we help patients from all over the world find natural solutions to problems like acid reflux and SIBO and candida infections and many other gastrointestinal disorders. But most importantly, we help people using functional medicine and lifestyle medicine, lifestyle changes. In today's video, I wanna cover with you five ways, uh, five natural ways of improving stomach acid. And in turn, this can have a profound impact on your health. You see, low levels of hydrochloric acid, uh, also known as hypochlorhydria, really has a disastrous impact on our body's ability to properly digest and absorb nutrients. Left untreated, low stomach acid can cause damage to the gastrointestinal system. It can cause infections in other parts of the GI tract. It can cause all kinds of nutritional deficiencies as well as contribute to a number of chronic health issues. For these reasons, recognizing the symptoms that are associated with low stomach acid or this hypochlorhydria, as well as understanding some of the, the causes of stomach acid, low stomach acid, is super important for digestion and your overall health. So let's get into some of my favorite ways to naturally treat and increase low levels of stomach acid. Number one on my list is eating fermented foods and drinking fermented beverages. Fermented vegetables are going to be things like kimchi, pickles, beets, sauerkraut, uh, table olives, and then of course drinking beverages or consuming beverages like apple cider vinegar, uh, kefir, kombucha. Um, you see, apple cider vinegar uh, really has amazing benefits uh, on the health of your gut. Apple cider vinegar not only is a popular treatment for acid reflux, but if you use apple cider vinegar on a regular basis, it can help acidify the stomach, which in turn improves the digestion of food. Apple cider vinegar is also a natural antifungal, like many other fermented foods. Now, because fermented foods are high in histamines, in some people, depending on their particular histamine threshold, they could develop things like diarrhea and low blood pressure or itchy skin or low blood pressure, depending on, again, how much and for how long you've been eating these fermented foods. So if you have an overgrowth of yeast in your gut, fermented foods and apple cider vinegar can certainly help with this. You know, what I typically recommend is eating anywhere between a quarter to a half a cup of sauerkraut or other fermented veggies a few times a week because this can really do wonders on your digestive system. You see, the powers of fermented foods comes from the fact that they contain live microorganisms, and this provides a vital uh, dose of diversity to the bacteria that are living in our guts. Studies have linked fermented foods to increased microbial diversity, improved immunity, better uh, weight management, uh, studies have linked fermented foods to improved cardiovascular health and better blood sugar. And there's actually studies that even show that fermented foods can improve cognitive function. So those are some great benefits to fermented foods. But again, the one word of caution uh, out there is, of course, is if you suspect a histamine intolerance or uh, um, you know for a fact that you have a histamine intolerance, you may want to skip eating fermented foods and use some of the other suggestions that I've had in this video. Number two on the list of ways to improve the stomach acid is to take vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid. You see, ascorbic acid is a natural water-soluble vitamin that, again, can increase the levels of acidity in the stomach. And doing something as simple as upping your, your daily vitamin C levels could, again, improve symptoms of acid reflux or bloating and belching. As with any of these methods for improving low stomach acid, if any of these exacerbate your symptoms, then it's very possible that you don't have a problem with low levels of stomach acid or that hypochlorhydria that we were talking about. So again, be careful with those things. Number three on my list is to take a supplement called betaine and pepsin. Now, most of my patients that I work with struggle with acid reflux. They struggle with some degree of IBS. They struggle with SIBO. 
and most of them will see a tremendous improvement in a wide variety of symptoms when they begin supplementation with betaine and pepsin. You see, betaine and pepsin provides two essential compounds that are super important for healthy digestion. Number one is they, of course, uh, have hydrochloric acid, and the second one is pepsin. This is an enzyme. Hydrochloric acid is vital for the proper digestion of protein and the absorption of vitamins and minerals, especially things like B12 and calcium and magnesium and copper and even zinc. Hydrochloric acid also plays a role in signaling your pancreas that it's time to release other kinds of digestive enzymes that help with the digestion of fat. Pepsin is one of the first enzymes that initiates or helps stimulate protein digestion and this in turn, of course, works in synergy with hydrochloric acid to ultimately round out the picture of protein digestion. Now, I usually have patients take one or two capsules of betaine and pepsin, probably about 10 or 15 minutes before each meal, and most, and I say most, will notice an improvement. If you try this method and you don't notice that much of a, of a difference uh, or that much of an improvement after a couple days, you can increase the dosage until you actually either start noticing an improvement in your symptoms or you notice that your symptoms get worse. In another video, uh, I actually explain what I do with patients in order to dial in the right dosage. But what I'll say is that in most cases, one to two capsules per meal usually does the trick, all right? Now, the fourth uh, thing that I typically recommend to uh, patients to improve stomach acid levels is to use something called peppermint, right? So you can take this either in a capsule form, you can take this as an essential, um, as an essential oil, you can grow peppermint, you know, in your patio container, right? I love gardening, and so for me, I grow all different kinds of mint. I grow peppermint, I grow spearmint, and so again, these are really easy to do, um, very easy to grow. The one thing I would tell you is that mint can take over your garden, and so if you if you're going to grow mint, then I recommend that you grow it again in a container. Um, peppermint itself has antibacterial properties. It helps uh, stimulate the stomach to produce more acid. Um, and like I said, peppermint, like all of the previous suggestions, helps with gas. It helps with increasing the flow of bile. It helps uh, improve the digestion of fats. And then of course it can help actually decrease the tone and the spasms of a very important sphincter that's associated with acid reflux. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter. And this is a sphincter that we typically see uh, people that suffer with acid reflux having problems with. Now, the fifth approach um, that I recommend, and this is actually one of my favorites, is using something called bitters. Um, these are things like gentian, artichoke, dandelion, uh, wormwood. And again, bitters work in a couple of different ways, right? The first way that bitters work is they act on the taste receptors or the taste bud receptors. Uh, which in turn stimulate the secretion of saliva in the mouth and they stimulate the secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. They increase blood flow uh, and circulation to all the abdominal organs. They increase the vagal nerve response, which stimulates just about the entire digestive process. Your, your digestion is dependent on a healthy vagal response, right? So again, I'll often use this approach if I have patients who perhaps let's say they're very sensitive to some of the other methods that we've discussed in this video. And that's again because bitters encourage, um, they encourage the body's own natural production of digestive enzymes, okay? So there you go, those are a few ways you can naturally improve the symptoms of hypochorhydria, that low stomach acid. Now remember, low stomach acid leads to poor digestion and poor digestion leads to bloating and gas and acid reflux and many other IBS symptoms. And the other thing I want you to know is that bloating in and of itself is a cause of bacterial overgrowth, you know, that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that I've talked quite a bit about. And that's again because bloating in itself affects the pressure on the ileocecal valve. So there you go. If you like today's video, comment below. Tell me some of the things that you've learned about today's video. And again, be sure to check out the next video where I'll talk about some of the, the symptoms that we typically overlook when it comes to low stomach acid and also who's at greatest risk, all right? So I promise you, you're not gonna to wanna to miss that video. We'll see you there, take care.